A woman accused of being a Russian spy was denied bail after prosecutors argued she posed an extreme flight risk. 29-year-old Maria Butina pleaded not guilty to charges of conspiracy and acting as a foreign agent. The federal indictment accuses Butina, who came to the U.S. on a student visa, of infiltrating conservative circles in order to advance Russian interests. Joining me now from Salt Lake City is retired FBI Special Agent Frank Montoya, Jr. Frank, good to see you. Good to be here. Thank you. So tell us, how does the FBI catch on to someone like Maria Butina, and what was the red flag that they noticed? Now, that's a really great question. It, it can happen in a lot of different ways. Somebody could come in and uh, make an allegation. Somebody could say that they had a, an unusual kind of encounter with this, this person. Uh, it could be you know, from traditional intelligence sources, whether they are technical or from human sources. Uh, it could be something that somebody read in a newspaper that, that made them curious about why this person is here and what they may be doing uh, as a student or, in her case, you know, as someone who is making all these connections to uh, these various organizations. Uh, she was recently deemed a flight risk and denied bail. What are the factors that prosecutors look for to convince a judge that someone might flee the country? Now, most likely in this case, the fact that she, she holds a foreign passport uh, and also information that the investigators would have provided to the judge that uh, she may have had a, a plane ticket or some other uh, information or communications that she was uh, going to leave the country imminently. Uh, but the fact that she doesn't have really a, a permanent status here, I think that, that that plays a role as well. All right, Frank, it's been reported that the FBI is investigating whether Russian banker Alexandra, or Alexander, I should say, Torshin illegally funneled foreign money to the NRA during the 2016 elections. Uh, what is Butina's connection to Torshin, and more importantly, why is their relationship so significant in this case? Yeah, if you look at the affidavit or the, the, yeah, the, the, the arrest complaint and the affidavit that attends it, uh, it, it makes it pretty clear that uh, he is her control. Uh, he, he's the one that is providing her with instructions on what to do and in some instances on how to do it uh, in terms of making connections to uh, inf uh, people of influence or people that, that, that they perceive may have influence with uh, senior uh, government uh, officials here. I think that the, the significance there in the grand scheme of things, especially when you look at it in terms of what we are seeing in the special counsel's uh, investigation is just an ongoing concerted effort to uh, uh, undermine, attack, I don't like to use the word metal because it's much more than that, but uh, attack uh, our, our democracy, undermine our national security, uh, to do the things that we have seen over the, the past 18 months to 24 months that have a sole intention of, of exerting Russian influence in, in, our, in our sovereignty to try to undermine it, to, to overcome it. All right, what and other I areas? Think that, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I think that, the, you know, that what that represents is it's a multifaceted effort to collect intelligence in this country. So with that said, what other areas should the U.S. be concerned about in terms of Russian intelligence operations? Yeah, you know, another great question because, I, as I said, it's a multifaceted effort. Uh, it, it's attacks on, you know, from, from a cyber perspective on our grid or at least reconnaissance of our electrical grids, uh, other elements of our infrastructure, banking, uh, obviously the, the electoral process. You know, a, a lot of people ask a lot of questions about that, for instance. Why, why would they be interested in that? Just, just the ability to breach uh, tra trust and confidence in our electoral process. I mean, when you look at what's going on in the country today, even if it's just about uh, um, intensifying that division, it really has a an impact. It really does, I think, uh, undermine that confidence and trust in the electoral process. It it's, you know, it's the influence operations uh, of the kind you see Butina uh, trying to uh, uh, effect in the United States in the sense that she's making contacts with a lot of folks that she believes or that Torsion or whoever's controlling Torsion believes can have a, a great impact on decision making at the national level in this country. I mean, you think about the unnamed uh, organization that many people are saying is the NRA. Uh, think about how much money they contributed to uh, the, the Trump campaign and what kind of influence that may have uh, enabled them. And if she has access to senior decision makers, folks that can 
you know, that have the ear of the president, what kind of impact could that have on not just policy, but day-to-day -day decisions on how we run this country or, and, and the decisions that the president makes in, in conjunction with that. And, and that's, you know, we, we tend to look at espionage, for instance, from the perspective that it's about national defense information or uh, individuals with access to classified information. But it's, it's way beyond that. And, and we've seen that with the Chinese. We're starting to see that with the Russians that it's not just about uh, those traditional ways of collecting intelligence, but it is about our infrastructure. It is about our intellectual property. It is about our sensitive technology. So in addition to just the influence peddling that's going on as well. All right, retired FBI Special Agent Frank Montoya, Jr. Frank, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.